special treat for you a little bit later in the show, but welcome first this morning. I'm Megan Kelly, and we begin this morning with a wife and mother convicted of murder. But was she actually guilty? Nancy Seaman, a Michigan woman, has been behind bars for 14 years for the murder of her husband, Robert. Now, there is zero doubt that she killed him with a hatchet. That's never been in dispute. She admits that. What she does dispute is whether it was premeditated first-degree murder, as the jury ultimately found. You see, Nancy claims that she was a domestic violence victim and says the trial did not give her a fair shot at proving that. Now, we've heard that kind of argument before in other cases, but now even the judge who presided over Nancy's trial is backing her, asking Michigan Governor Rick Snyder to commute her sentence from life in prison where she sits right now and to set her free. I spoke with Nancy in an exclusive jailhouse phone interview about the abuse she says she suffered, about the murder and the trial, and we'll have that for you later in the show. But first, a look back at the crime that shocked this upscale Michigan community. Nancy Seaman has spent more than a decade behind bars for the murder of her husband, Bob, who she says started to physically abuse her just two weeks into their marriage back in 1973. Testifying during the murder trial in 2005, she talked about their relationship. There was no abuse before we got married. He treated me like a queen. He never raised his voice at me. He never abused me before we were married. So two weeks after we were married, when he beat the hell out of me, I was in a state of shock. Nancy describes herself as Catholic and says because of her faith, she never took steps to leave her husband. A marriage is a sacrament. And you take a vow, and it's for better or worse. And that's how I was raised. That's how my parents raised me. That's how their marriage was. Nancy says she went to the police twice, but never filed a police report. As the years went on, she describes the abuse as getting worse. She decided to finally leave her husband and put down a payment on a condo, but says when Bob found out, he was furious. According to Nancy... There was a confrontation, and her husband threatened her with a knife. She says she retreated to the garage, where Nancy claims he then came at her. That's when she struck him in the head with a hatchet and stabbed him 19 times with the same knife that she claims he used to attack her. During the trial, prosecutors argued Nancy planned to kill her husband all along. She was seen on video the day before the murder, buying the very hatchet she used to kill him. Her actions after the murder, including the cleanup and cover-up, were also suspicious. After the crime, Seaman never went to the police. They ultimately came to her after friends reported their concerns that Bob was missing. And her older son, Jeff, a witness for the prosecution, testified against his mother. He told jurors that he saw his parents argue, but never saw any abuse between them. Lynn Bronson was an alternate juror. In a 2012 interview for the Oxygen show, Snapped, she said Jeff's testimony helped them decide to convict Nancy Seaman. It was really what he had to say that really drove home us believing that it, it was something that she had thought out and, and delivered. It, it was, was an ass. accident that he was dead. He shouldn't be dead. Nobody should have been dead that morning. Nobody should have been dead. Joining me now are three people who believe Nancy Seaman deserves to be released from prison. Judge John McDonald, who oversaw Nancy's murder trial, Kelly Lynn, an advocate who has started a letter campaign to Governor Snyder on Nancy's behalf, and Nels Thompson, a retired prison psychologist who treated Nancy multiple times behind bars. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Welcome. Judge, let me start with you. Sure. Um, Zayas practiced law for almost 10 years, and I've never heard of a judge doing this. <laughs> so how unusual is that for, for very, you? It's very unusual. I'll be the first one to admit that. What made you, uh, you know, over, you oversaw the trial, the jury came to the conclusion of first-degree murder. Yes. What made you question that decision and, and the trial in general? Well, there's so much to try to explain. I'll, I'll do it as fast as I can. Uh, first of all, there's no question in my mind, based on the testimony I heard, that he was a batterer. I don't think the jury believed that. But the, the one gentleman who testified was a lifelong friend for 35 years. He said uh, Mr. Seaman had a very volatile temper, would have tried to intimidate people, uh, <clears throat> talked to him about getting marriage counseling, he blew up in his face, said no way, indicated to him that she would never get one half of his estate. The other thing was is that she was ready to leave him. She purchased a condo. She borrowed $10,000 from her 
father so she could get away from him. Mm -hmm. So she was getting ready to leave. I see your point. She's getting ready to leave, so why would she murder him, is your that's point? That's the whole point. Um, and and, and that's, a, that's a very good question. But, the, you know, the jury would say, and I'll start with you on this, Judge. Sure. We considered all that. We didn't buy it. We I didn't, we didn't believe that. her. You know how it works. One of the reasons why they didn't buy it was because they had an expert witness, Dr. Lenora Walker, who was a world-renowned expert on, on battered women's syndrome. There's a case in Michigan called People versus Crystal, and that stood for the proposition that the expert witness cannot opine that the victim is a battered woman. Nor you can talk about domestic violence. You can do it. You can in talk about Nancy, you can do it but you general. can't say Nancy did it because of That's the battering. It. They never, jury never heard that. I have no quibble or, or an argument with the jury returning that verdict based on the evidence that they heard. What bothered me was the evidence they did not hear. Mm -hmm. So, do you think you got it wrong in letting in certain evidence and pre precluding others? I sure hope not. Because if I did, that would be a tragic event. I should be reversed if I got it wrong. So you tried to reduce this to a second-degree murder charge, reverse. and it got it got upped back to first-degree murder by the appellate court. Court of appeals. There was three three judge panel. Two of them uh, said I committed abuse of discretion. The third judge said no, it wasn't. It was most most trial judges would have walked away at that point. And said, all right, that's it. But you're still on it, and and going to the to the governor to try to get him to commute her sentence. Now let me ask you, Kelly, because. Most people look at Nancy's situation and say, okay, he was a batterer. Maybe she killed him because he was, he was beating her. But how does that explain the fact that she bought the hatchet the night before? She, it looks like she was laying, you know, the, the foundation for the murder. And then after the murder happened, she didn't call the cops and say, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. she, she cleaned up the crime scene. She went to work the next day. She wrapped his body like a mummy, according to the testimony, and shoved it in the back of her car. Right? So people are looking at that saying, that doesn't sound like somebody who, in the heat of the moment, was being attacked and just panicked. That's a big question, obviously. I don't know. One thing that people don't know about Nancy is that she's a skilled craftsman, so to speak. Nancy took a class in college when it, on tools, using tools. She asked Bob to help her do the, the, to do the yard work. And he refused to do so. And so she was. She bought a hatchet specifically to go and do the yard work and take care of it herself. But just one gardening tool, just a hatchet, on a, on a Sunday night needed. where it was raining before she was going to spend the week at work. You know, it was like, wasn't the night before she was going to do the gardening? I'm not taking a position. I'm just saying this is what the jury's, you know, concluding. This is what the prosecution's evidence was. If you were to see Nancy, she's a very tiny woman. And I understand the part or why you would why you would question the timing of that. She's a very tiny woman. And for her to take and buy a hatchet and then take a knife and decide that this is how I'm going to duke it out with my husband in the garage on my way out, it's just really hard to comprehend. Mm -hmm. It's it's it there's just Nancy's a very intelligent woman. There's no way that she would think about brutally attacking her husband when the truth is she would have been the one dead. And there are a lot of, I know that her side has made the point there were many easier ways for her to murder many him easier if ways. she had decided she wanted to murder him in advance. You've examined her. You've yeah. talked to her. I think all parties involved, those who support her and those who don't agree, she was a terrible witness in court. She didn't really help herself in her demeanor and the way she was. Doesn't mean she was a liar necessarily, um, but you see patterns here that are very consistent with those of a domestic abuse victim. Tell us what they are. Nancy was, is an extremely private person. Well, let me tell you a, a few things from my assessment. Nancy's absolutely not a violent person. Nancy would not want to hurt your feelings, and Nancy is devastated that Bob died. That's just a fact. However, within this domestic violence, her privacy, she is a private woman. She didn't want anybody to know that her home was not like other homes, happy homes. She developed a ritual. Her husband would go off and, and break things, and she would try to repair them and fix them up as fast as she could, so nobody would see it. She tried to get it done before the boys came home. She hid bruises from everybody. She, she went to work hiding bruises. She did not want anybody to know. She was ashamed. She was, um, 
But it was it was part of trying to project a normal, yes. healthy life, is thank, what you're saying. Thank you for helping me. Yes, yeah. she was, I understand. She was trying to do Th that. This is your belief in having examined her. Now, some of this was put before the jury, and they, you know, they rejected it. And coming up next, what Nancy told me when I asked her if she feels guilty for killing her husband, and why she didn't come clean with the cops when they showed up after the murder. Don't go away. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.